Welcome, I am Aritikka. This talk is distilled from 25 years of experience, so prepare to be entertained by content. First a couple of words about myself. After developing software, I became an organizational therapist in the fast changing laboratory called Nokia Networks. I was developing teamwork, leadership, program management with consultants, group therapists, and finally with many famous Agile coaches. Our team was one of the roots of less large-scale Scrum. Resistance training is nowadays recommended for all possible health reasons. This is 60 kilograms. What is our scope? A typical company is born when the founders have an idea, hire the workers to deliver to the customers. This culture remains when the company grows. Agile has proven to work with team customer workflow, especially in small scale. It has been rather silent about the organizational dimension. Now Agile is the default the desired safe solution for big companies with operations, sales and other functions and the sea level is demanding that change. Both scaling agile and the transformation have proven difficult. This we want to solve. How to co-create the system continuously. Let's look at the problem. First, a four-minute explanation video, then checking customer problem fit. Is your organization stuck? You have many parallel projects ongoing, but nothing moves. Everyone is waiting for information, resources, or decisions. You spend your time in endless meetings, planning, and rework. You are experiencing coordination chaos. But how did you get there? Here we have Dan. He's heading a fast-growing software-based business. The company is growing using common sense. Everyone focuses on their specialty because that's what they were hired to do. And it seems efficient. Talented, enthusiastic people just make it work. The success is based on the informal communication network. Specialization works, and it becomes the unquestioned norm. So whenever there is a problem, a new kind of specialist is hired or nominated. The number of specialists keeps increasing and the complexity grows. In order to get things done, the company now hires a coordination specialist. Nina is the project manager. The business grows. More customers, more products, more specialists, more coordinators. The project managers, now headed by Nina, somehow pull it together. They become the heroes who squeeze value out of the messy organization. But the more the organization grows, the more chaotic it gets. Nina's project managers use the best processes and tools, but are not able to create results like before. The key people are torn between several projects. They are working days, nights, weekends, and holidays. They are burning out. Meanwhile, some other specialists are idling because their specialty is not needed at the moment. Experienced people start to leave. The organization has become too complex to be coordinated. The top management sits down to figure it out. Resources are not optimally allocated. The people should focus more on the projects and less on other stuff. We have to tighten the ship, clarify the roles and responsibilities, define detailed processes, measure and reward individual performance. This is what management consultants advise. Unfortunately, the management action breaks the informal knowledge sharing network and things get even messier. More control and more bureaucrats, but less outcome. The company becomes slow and expensive compared to emerging rivals. The top management tries to find another solution. We still have a strong customer base, but the new competitors eat our profit margin. People are not productive and projects have become slow. We have tried everything, but we are powerless in improving the situation. Let's outsource the problem to a contractor specialized in providing resources. We can then control the contractor by commercial agreements. Nina has studied some lean and agile. She disagrees with the management plan. Dan sees the challenges with outsourcing. The problem is not about people. It is the system. Outsourcing the leadership problem would complicate things even more. 
but just using lean and agile best practices to improve the coordination does not solve the root cause, which is the over-specialization of the people and fragmentation of the organization. Dan sees the light. We need to think completely differently. The problem is our old thinking, where others think and others do. Others decide and others coordinate. Some companies have taken another path. They trust in customer-oriented learning and cross-functional teams. Project managers are not coordinating plans and resources. The business decision-making is fast and close to the teams. This is possible for large corporations when the top management makes the suitable organizational design and truly supports the learning. There will be discovery, innovation, and business agility. It is motivating and builds a workplace where people stay and grow. Food for Thought was provided by GoSee. More details at coordinationchaos.com. The organization has three essential stakeholder groups with their specific interests, working realities, and subcultures. To be accepted, any solution needs to solve everyone's related problem. For the teams, the work doesn't work. There's a huge legacy of local knowledge, software, competence, interfaces, tools, customer-specific details, and so on. The coordinators we remember from the video. The executives receive the worst escalations. They have a limited and filtered view to the organization and a limited and indirect means to influence the organization. Everyone is frustrated, powerless and confused. I think we have verified the customer problem fit. Adding specialized coordinators did not work we need to find another way to connect the big system to the local details, connect the team realities and executive decisions. Experiences from Agile Transformations In 20 years, from challenger to hype. Agile by tools means copying rituals, roles, artifacts, even trying to transform by deploying an electronic tool. Agile by fools means copying the process or framework. This happens when large organizations are afraid or just don't know. External consultants or internal ivory tower define the blueprint, new process, roles and responsibilities, copied from a framework or success story then quickly recruit many external or internal coaches just to implement the blueprint. The system has already been optimized for the old boundary conditions, and there's a huge mass of local detail. To change that successfully, we need to include the people who actually do the work. They know the details, and their practical actions will be the new way. Unfortunately, it seems that the Agile by Fools is the norm nowadays, yet another manifestation of coordination chaos. So, what do we need for continuous improvement? We want to have the wisdom and power in the same room to make good real decisions. We want to connect team realities and executive decisions. From less large-scale Scrum perspective, this is establishing the improvement service. Input comes from retrospectives, individuals from anywhere. We have limited capacity, so many ideas are just archived. It's important to differentiate between pain and countermeasures. We want to focus on the truly biggest pain, then prioritize our actions accordingly. Difficult problems require careful analysis. We want to think before using our scarce resources. Trying out Toyota's A3 is a good starting point. We have already tried all this. Why would it work this time? Where do we find the people? Why would they bother executives or talented specialists? Let's see what the coaching community can do. We may call it improvement community or whatever suits the culture. Next, the core pattern. 
people who work with actual real details, developers, line managers, product owners, specialists, business people, executives, take time to think together. This cross-role, cross-organizational network has meetings, trainings, conferences, pilots, open spaces, system dynamics modeling, future search workshops, A3 improvement projects, Gemba with the executives. They analyze the experiences with new thinking tools, taking into account both the system and the local realities. People with new understanding, identity and connections will act differently. When they go back to their daily work, they have the courage, skill and credibility to coach experiments at teams. This process requires good leadership and structures. Experience of this process highly increases the probability of success. By learning, we mean creating knowledge about how the organization really works, recognizing patterns and creating new vocabulary for the organization, not copying what outsiders say. For that, even radical new thinking and experiences are introduced. The executive management, who decides where we invest time and money, needs to keep resources, including their own time. In this role, they give direction, the task of knowledge creation to the network, the coaching community. For small organizations, starting the community may be fast and straightforward. For large and complicated organizations, more time and more talking is needed. In both cases, the same principles apply. So, what is the community doing in practice? When the coaching community is able to provide organizational analysis that the executives do not get from anywhere else, it has become indispensable. If not, the executives will ask the blueprint from management consulting companies. For the community, the analysis provides a shared goal, the essential condition for teamwork. No goal, no teamwork. The coaching community is now leading the change that has been designed by themselves, together with the people, based on both the local and global realities. These two together make the continuous improvement. This approach is agnostic about the frameworks or other technical choices. We advise first to take a deep dive into how this organization really works, then use the best framework. Important results are new leadership culture and teamwork. The coaching community shows example in its own improvement work. Participation in the community has proven to be excellent leadership training and talent management. Most probably, the organization will improve. So, what is the fundamental competence? How to explore our working reality together with other people? The rest will follow. A training program provides skills and experience of teamwork, building personal investment into continuous improvement, unlike habitual workshops and meetings where busyness leads to superficial results. We encourage to use and develop the existing leadership talent as much as possible. Senior specialists, talented juniors, line managers, product owners, Instead of replacing leaders, educate them. This kind of learning has impact, shapes culture and stays. This is an example of the basic training about leading people in chains, initiation to the coaching community, learning to learn as an organization. This is the fundamental competence. In addition, there will be any necessary technical or process training. The first day is practicing human interaction, how to talk to people. The second day is about understanding the organization, the context. 
teamwork is studied at the third day when the training group itself has experienced some team development. And when we finally get into continuous improvement, people storm into work. Agile topics are coming from the organizational analysis made so far. When the transformation develops, this will evolve into an effective leadership training for the basic work. How to build the community? There is a core team making the biggest investment in learning the system. An internal-external pair leads this core team, the community and the transformation. Their ability to lead the group dynamics is crucial. It is extremely unlikely that the community would self-organize by itself. The executives take their responsibility in giving direction to the community and participating in the continuous improvement. They invest their own time. After all, this is best care of the owner's money. The internal leading coach may be invited to the executive management team as a member or as a coach. The rest of the coaching community is the interface to the broad reality. We trust in learning. When about 10 to 20 percent of the population has been initiated to the network, Cultural change starts to be irreversible. This five days is about leadership and coaching. More is needed for process technology and so on. Please visualize a case. A large organization is facing a disruption. 28-year-old senior consultants observe pilots in our struggling organization distill best practices and design an organizational change supported by a cookbook. Often those who know just a little are most confident. Fear is the dominant reason for avoiding learning for people in any role or position. As a leader, executive or just a colleague, you can take learning as your leadership strategy. Imagine how exploring together creates connection. Or if in tight situation you say, I don't know, let's look at it. You want people to use their own brains. Leaders and coaches face resistance every day. It's very constructive when you can channel that energy into learning. Link to our previous session about this topic are in the end of slides. This is the classical role definition for an organizational coach or consultant. The executives decide where we invest time and money. They give direction and share their pressure with the organization. When the teams or the organization cries, help, we don't know, the coaches are available. They help to learn whatever is needed, process technology and so on. I wonder if you have seen this. There's no pool for coaching. Workers don't understand what coaches do. The improvement is delegated to the coaches who are then just ignored. Maybe they are not completely ignored, but can serve as secretaries or management messengers. The coaches might miss the necessary competence, or maybe the role is completely misunderstood. Full-time coaches, internal or external, are expected to implement a blueprint, but it does not really work and is not well received. Projects are more urgent and the coaches are close to the public. Not recommended. We seem to have two alternatives. Either the coaching community is collaborating, doing teamwork, or falls back to individual coaches implementing a blueprint. 
Of course, in simple cases, unlike ours, a blueprint works. For serious understanding of teamwork, I recommend two sources, Richard Hackman and Susan Whelan. According to Hackman, in order to have great performance, teamwork, great collaboration, there needs to be three major conditions. Compelling direction, real team and enabling structure. When the team puts effort in, it will find its way and develop. This is valid also for our bigger unit, the few dozens of cross-role, cross-organizational change leaders. Better than ever analysis is clear and challenging. Being subject to reality check makes it consequential. Systematic continuous improvement, A3, will be a whole task in the messy organization. The compelling direction makes the team interdependent. Input from all rows and corners is needed. People want to influence. There's a reason to participate and commit. And there's a clear authorization from the executives. The organizational context and culture is supporting because all roles and corners have been invited. Also remember the 10% converted influential people from all roles. No goal means no trust and weak connection to the executives. The community exists only for it, its members. I don't really need others. <clears throat> Better to have my autonomy. Nice, but why the bother? No special authorization. The community may still meet, share experiences and argue about opinions, but that is completely missing the potential. So I am expected to make the change here. Luckily, as a part-time coach, I have my project work. Without the support and leadership of the community, the full-time coaches will improvise. It is often okay locally, but the organization is a wild west. Analyzing the failure patterns is proposing that either we have a well-working community or we fail. There are of course variations. For example, how much the executives can invest their time or starting top-down or bottom-up by an executive or some other person. However, the following guidelines are good to keep in mind. Over-specialization and fragmentation are the root causes for the pain. Teamwork provides agility and resilience that helps to survive. For teamwork, we need the enabling structures, and culture will follow the structures. The new structures and the way of working is established by continuous improvement, led by the coaching community, taking both the local and system realities into account. The collaboration between the coaching community and executive management works when both get their pain solved. Learning how we really work is the key to this collaboration. This will start small and expand in the speed of the organization. Fearless learning, knowledge creation, is the single most important thing to strive for. Even one individual can show the way and start the growing movement. Inviting everyone's influence by the cross-role, cross-organizational network deliberately fights against alienation, the over-specialization trend. Use external wisdom as much as you can. And here, pointers for further study. Thank you for your patience. You can download the slides from gocfi slash blog slash xp2020. Welcome to our questions and answers session at the conference. We appreciate if you can send your questions beforehand. See you at xp2020.